How's it going, guys? As promised, I'm going to be giving you guys some healer guides for the War Within beta in which I've been playing. I'm going to go ahead and get started with Preservation first, just simply because I think it's, you know, probably the most fun healer. Also can be one of the most frustrating. But yeah, it's just a ton of fun. It's really powerful. Before we get started with the guide, I kind of want to show you, like, the tier list of where I have Preservation right now. Um, there's still two more weeks before the expansion comes out, and then after that, there's two more weeks, so a full month before the season starts, so things are definitely, um, it's very possible, like, tuning changes and whatnot. You can see Mistweaver's pretty down bad, Holy Priest pretty down bad, uh, but if you were interested in playing Preservation, I would say, if you never played them before, they're kind of difficult to learn, but once you get there, um, it's, you know, it's not too bad. I think, I think there's a lot of, like, things with preservation that makes it easier than other healers such as multiple schools of magic high mobility um but yeah so preservation is very very powerful right now it does a ton of damage it does a ton of healing um still has uh, the same weaknesses so this is uh this is the outline of the guide that i'm going to be discussing today i'm going to be going to getting into all of this hopefully this covers you know about everything um pros and cons we'll go ahead and talk about right now so obviously preservation or evoker is like the first time blizzard ever came up with what is called i guess like a mid-range class what that means i don't know but what i do know is that considering it has a smaller range it has to be compensated elsewhere which is why it feels like it can do so much damage and why it can do so much healing because the range is lower. So it's kind of like Blizzard saying like, listen, you have a shorter range, so we're going to make it worthwhile when you're in range, I guess. Um, but the damage is huge. I'll show you the last shuffle I did. I went 3-3 in this shuffle. I probably should have went like 5-1 or something, um, but I played it pretty bad. Overall data for this shuffle, uh, my Unholy Decay did 190, well, the Unholy Decay did 195 million, while I did 107 million. So just a little food for thought there. Um, and then, you know, out healed the rest of Druid. Flex. That's uh, that's the pros. And then the cons are obviously the short range. Uh, your biggest weakness on preservation is crowd control. The strongest types of crowd control into you are going to be the Cyclone, the Polymorph. Um, fears don't feel as bad, I guess, as Polymorph and Cyclone. I don't necessarily know why, but it's just kind of how it is. Um, and then Root Beam destroys you, stuns destroy you, so, like, if RMD is popular, Preservation, no, no go. You know, even, like, just Mage Lock, Druid, things like that, um, they're gonna make your life really, really awful, or even, like, if Boomkin, like, Boomkin Rogue was a hard counter for Prez before, those CCs destroy you, and, and you're super susceptible to them because you're always kind of, like, in that melee range. Uh, you did get, like, a new ability this expansion, which we'll talk about a little bit when we're going over the talents, which is, uh pretty soon same old story for preservation man when you're strong you're the strongest and when you fight what counters you uh you are the weakest so having like such strong pros is definitely like weighed down very heavily by you know the cons which are also very meta classes right now so it's hard to say do you think evokers are too overpowered with how much damage in their healing do they're doing into most stuff because you know when you fight that you know that rock you get hard countered it's, it's hard to say. Um, it probably needs to get nerfed, like, a tiny bit. We're going to go over add-ons. So my list on beta is not complete, so I'm actually logged on to live here to kind of tell you all the add-ons I use. Advanced interface options you don't really need, but if you're ever looking for it, it gives you the... Basically, the options that Blizzard took away. I have no idea why they took this away. It's It, it blows my mind that you need an add-on for standard options in their game. Uh, better Blizz plates. This add-on is a godsend. Um, it does exactly what it says it does. It's Blizzard plates, but better. A lot of people ask me, um, you know, how do you get the Arena 123 over your name? Replace Arena name with ID. Um, and then advanced settings. People ask how I hide, I guess, uh, the, like, cast bars on my name plates with the arrows. You could just do hide cast bar, hide health bar here, so you don't have, like, the arrow and the health bar. Um, and then there's an advanced setting which is raid marker i believe oh there it is so you could you could hide the raid marker so you don't see the raid marker and the arrow i'm not going to get too into this right now because i want to like kind of get through these guides but that is a very very good um add on there if you have any questions about it always feel free to ask me on stream but i gave you the couple tips that are uh i guess worth something um big debuffs is really nice it shows the debuffs that are big on your um your raid frames and that makes it 
much simpler to dispel, I guess. Details is obviously what people use to track. Diminish is what I use to track DRs on myself and my teammates. Frame sort keeps me always at the bottom of the frame. It's very nice for solo shuffle. Nameplate buffs is my um, my nameplate add-on. You can actually use it with better blizz plates, but I have everything that I want on nameplate buffs, and I, I don't like changing because I'm old. Uh, Omnibar shows you all the uh, you know interrupts, uh, cooldowns from your enemy. Omni CD shows you your teammates' cooldowns in your um, party. Well, you can put them wherever you want. I just kind of have them at the top of my raid frames. S Arena updated too by Samers is just S Arena. Um, that's your enemy arena nameplates. Weak is obviously the most overpowered add-on known to mankind. This is basically a hack. You could do everything with it. Um, people come in my stream and they're like, wow, retail looks so cluttered. And this is probably why weak R's are just everywhere. I don't have like an updated weak R package, but I'm sure Mez will make one as soon as the expansion drops. And then, you know, we'll get rolling with that. Um, I guess I could show you some of the weak R's I have real quick on Evoker specifically. Um, Ancient Flame. I'll just, I'm going to show quickly. And then if you want the link, you could just go and pause the video and copy it word for word. So there's the Ancient Flame. It shows you when you have the fast cast available. Call of Ysera, which is pretty nice right there. Temporal Compression right there. Life Spark, which is your instant uh, Living Flame. Shroud. Precog. And that looks like it's basically it. Okay. So add-ons, basically the same as last expansion if you've seen any of my guys before. Macros. Macros are the same exact they are in the previous expansion. I have not changed anything, but I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly. Arena Kick 1, um, target player, Dispel. I use Dispel macros to target myself. My Party 1, my Party 2 would Dispel, so no matter who I'm targeting, I never have to swap person in order to Dispel. Makes it kind of quicker, IMO. Um, stop casting in your, um, your kick macros at cursor deep breath so I don't need to do the aim um, stop casting focus interrupt cancel our oh, I guess I use time stop before cancel our time stop I'm not really using that one right now uh, cursor rescue so you don't have to you know put your cursor down you can just kind of go there uh, same thing with dream flight this is actually something interesting I'll talk about this in a little bit but that is a macro cursor with landslide arena kick one two three uh, dispel cell focus sleep um, Time stop, chrono loop, things that I'm not really playing currently. Um, Dispel Party 2, Sleep Arena 1, Sleep Arena 2, Sleep Arena 3. This is your uh, Obsidian Scales, but there is like a macro, so basically you can't spam it. So if I press my Obsidian Scales right now, I can press it a thousand times in a row, and it will never use that second charge until I don't hold my button for five seconds. I believe it's five seconds. And then it resets the wall. So basically there's like a five second like stop on it. It could be ten seconds, honestly. Well, I, I'm not sure which number means which but yeah you see there basically if you ever double tap your uh, obsidian scales that one's definitely worth having or stop casting in into stasis i think that's basically it nothing has really changed with evoker besides i guess that new time dilation macro which we'll talk about pretty soon as soon as we get to talents yeah so evoker season one stat prio in chance i don't know exactly if this is what i will play for sure but basically on retail um the start of the expansion i went full haste Towards the middle expansion, I kind of went a 50-50, and then towards the end of the expansion, I kind of ended up just going full mastery. Um, when I say 50-50, I mean between haste and mastery. It feels like we're at the point again where you want a lot of haste. I personally wouldn't recommend going like under 20% haste, because um, that's kind of like the spot where I ended up towards last expansion. If I was like hard stacking mastery, I really like to be closer to 30. That's where it felt really comfortable for me. So I do think a lot of the stat you're going to be chasing in the first season is haste because it's your essence regen it's your cast speed you know it just it feels really bad to play without it so basically i would say haste verse is what you're going for enchants there's some new enchants um so basically you don't really oom um right now the chest enchant you're going to be using is um the one without the mana increase unless you start to oom um in arena so it's basically just the raw intellect and then also the legs so on, on retail right now, or, you know, Dragonflight, whatever, you used um, Intellect plus Mana on chest, and then you used Intellect plus Mana on legs. They have a much lower value right now on the War Within, where it doesn't feel like it's worth it, and I'm not ooming. So it's possible that we end up switching to the Mana Enchants, but for, for now, I'm not really messing with them. Haste to Rings is what I'm going for, but there is a Cursed Enchant, which may be more valuable to get. You can't do it for every single stat, but basically... Yeah, this one would basically take my haste and 
sorry, excuse me, take my verse and give me more haste. So the normal one is 315, this one's 390. It's actually probably better to get the mastery one because the mastery one takes crit. So we could take away a stat that we're not actually interested in, which is critical strike and then get more mastery. It's probably more valuable to do that, honestly. So that way you get like, you know, a decent little mastery boost and we're taking away some crit. Uh, we do lose a little bit of haste, but you're just getting more of the stat that you actually want. I'm actually using the haste proc enchant from what I understand. I tried this heal one, it kind of did nothing. Uh, I tried this damage one that proc to main stat. It just feels like 1,670 main stat when you have 60,000 is so insignificant that I'd rather just go ahead and proc 4,000 of whatever I want. 4,000 of a secondary stat is uh, pretty good. Speed on cloak, speed on uh, racers, speed on boots, and I think that about sums it up for enchants. Crafted gear, embellishments, and tier gear. So the embellishment that I think is worthwhile using so far this expansion is embellishments are really weird. I almost feel like every embellishment is actually really bad. Um, the only embellishment that I've seen worthwhile so far is uh, while above 80% health, your healing redistributes up to 2% of your health to the target. So kind of like a mini vitality conduit, if you guys remember what that is. There is another embellishment that's not currently working, which I also think we might end up using if this one ends up feeling like it's not that great. And it's kind of like uh, the mastery one from last expansion, but it works with verse and crit. Yeah, you can't, for some reason, you can't use this yet, but provides uh, versatility while above 80% health. This might actually end up being pretty good for preservation. As a matter of fact, I might actually prefer it because versatility is healing that you're gaining, not like kind of like, you know, uh, healing transfer. Um, as well as damage, versatility is damage. So, and it also allows you to kind of maybe not feel so bad about going for some of those other secondary stats. So, uh, dust thread lining is something that uh, we'd keep in uh, consideration. In terms of crafted gear, um, the first thing you probably want to craft when you are able to, when you know, it comes out, is probably just go for a ring. That way, you can actually get a second haste ring because right now there's only one from PvP gear. Um, other than that, I don't really think it matters too much what you craft. Um, but if you're going for mostly haste, you probably want to try to find pieces that have haste. And I think Evoker is actually pretty lucky because I think all of the gear has haste. So you could try to, you know, do like neck or chest or something like that, even though all these pieces actually do have haste available, I'm pretty sure. For a lot of healers, I've actually been just straight up skipping the tier bonus because the tier bonus is nerfed by 50% in PvP and stats are really scarce right now. So getting like really bad stats um, for a half nerfed tier doesn't seem that worth it, but I do think Evoker is one of the ones that um, is worth it. I've been skipping out on the chest piece, which is high crit, low verse. And the two set, keep in mind, we'll read it with the 50% nerf. It doesn't show us, but this is what it would be. Reversion healing is increased by 5% and has a 25% chance to give you one extra stack of temporal compression. So right there we got two, right there we got four. So it would be nerfed by half in PvP. Um, that's okay. I mean, temporal compression leads to essence burst, um, which isn't bad, but I think more importantly is temporal compression increases your healing per stack. So, um, by 10% per, so 5% per, so at a four stack, you get 20%. So if you have a four stack, your, your dream breath is 20% stronger. That's pretty good. You know, uh, you basically are almost always going to have these temporal compression stacks. Um, so 20% healing on uh, Dream Breath is obviously pretty solid. Let's go ahead and talk about the spec. A few changes, nothing too crazy. They added, um, which I'm really happy about, they added Life Spark. And yeah, Life Spark into the Evoker tree. And honestly, Evokers kind of felt very bare without instant Living Flame. So having that to your class tree and not attached to a uh, tier. Um, it's, it's just so nice. I'm really, really happy this came out. So this is a spec I was messing around with. Um, if you're playing Chrono Warden, I kind of like this build. You could play this as well in Shuffle. I, I was kind of messing around with playing Titan's Gift and Energy Loop for more damage. Um, this is 25% more and this is 35% more. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I, I really like uh, the short Spirit Bloom with Chrono Warden. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But if you were to play... Um, Flame Shaper, you don't really need this short uh, Spirit Bloom. And then you could do, like, I guess this, for example, just with the extra point flow state. On the left side, uh, they moved the things around a little bit. Renewing Blaze is a little bit easier to get. Um, Chrono Warden, I didn't necessarily feel the need to play uh, Innate Magic if you were to play Flame Shaper. I kind of was playing Innate Magic because Chrono Warden is less essence starved. Um, Spatial Paradox, Augmentation Evokers used to have this, but... Um, now you have it baseline. 
I don't really use it every single round. I could probably use it more. Uh, but it basically just increases your range for the duration. And I've mostly been using this offensively, if I'm being honest. I feel like I do, I do a pretty good job allowing myself to be in range of my teammates. But what other healers don't expect is like getting sleepwalked from 60 yards away or 50 yards away. Or getting kicked from 50 yards away. So definitely something that is uh, pretty nice. Um, other than that, the, the spec is uh, basically the same. Chrono Warden is just straight up better than Flame Shaper for many different reasons. Um, basically, your Living Flame is empowered, so every single Living Flame cast that you do will do more. Uh, your Hover is a blink, which is actually pretty nice for, you know, trying to avoid CC. If it... Oh, you know what? I think that's because I'm not moving. If it, um, if it decides to work, that is. Uh, when you use Tip the Scales, you literally just get Bloodlust. I mean, there's... Yeah. Look at this, man. Cooldown recovery rate, uh... Cast speed, movement speed, it just, it feels so amazing. It's its really, really powerful. Basically start the game off with like tip scales, fire breath almost every single time. Spear Plume puts up an additional hot. Basically Chrono Warden is better. Golden Opportunity is amazing. The biggest downfall of Chrono Warden is that your fire, your fire uh, living flame is now on your arcane. So if you get kicked on this, this happened to me today and I lost a round because it like kind of threw me off a little bit. No rewind, no time dial, no echo, no reversion. So getting kicked on uh, Chrono Flames is actually very lethal. So if you're playing a comp where you are tanking a lot of kicks, you might actually just need to play Flame Shaper, or else you might be su too susceptible to being interrupted. I can show you my um, option nodes. Um, faster Deep Breath, uh, more healing on Dream Breath, and Life Cinders, which was recently nerfed, and this is why I had the macro to Time Dial and um, Renewing Blaze. I think it might actually be better in like a cast sequence or if you wait a couple seconds. I start, I start, I stopped using that macro because I think it's a little better to throw up the Renewing Blaze a few seconds after because Renewing Blaze lasts 7 seconds and time dilation lasts 10. So if you wait a few seconds then you're kind of catching the tail end of that time dilation which really really hurts your teammates and it actually makes time dilation feel like a real cooldown which is kind of nice. This is basically the spec. Honor Talents are exactly the same as they used to be. Um, you're basically playing Purge and everything that has a Purge, Null Shroud into basically everything. And then, you know, Dream Projection, if you if you want a little bit extra healing, a little bit extra spells, Unburden, if you feel like you're getting trained, obviously really good. Uh, Obsidian Metal has probably gained a lot of value, especially with Corona Warden, since that tree is, um, you know, kind of susceptible to being interrupted. Um, and then Dream Walkers also still does quite a bit of damage. Um, didn't really, I mean, 8 million is not, you know, a tiny amount, but yeah, this was the last lobby that I played in. One thing that's kind of nice about Chrono Flames is that you get a stack of Temporal Compression for every single um, Living Flame that you do, which is, like, insane, and you shoot out a lot of them. So basically, it's just, like, Temporal Compression City. Like, if you do a Fire Breath here, it's just going to shoot out a bunch of Living Flames. Oh, those don't actually give Temporal Compression. That's interesting. Let's see if this does. Only gave one, okay, but... You still get one per. I, th I thought all the little extra procs still gave you some, but it still ends up being uh, pretty nice. Healing rotation slash stasis uh, rotations. The stasis rotation may have changed a little bit. I'm going to talk about it for both Chrono and for um, for both Chrono and Flame Shaper. It's it's pretty easy. Uh, you just it's just muscle memory. Um, healing rotation on Evoker is you want to try to echo before every single heal. When I was doing some VOD reviews for other preservation Evokers, it looks like they weren't trying to echo before every every single heal I, you know they were doing like single reversions um single single verdants and sometimes i do a single verdant just to get call of ysera active so i can do like a bigger dream breath like if i have two essence and i want to get a big dream breath up i have no call ysera um for example right here i'll do a non -echo echoed verdant into an echo dream breath so there's definitely some, some times where you don't do it but you want to try to echo before every single heal, um, and you want to, at bare minimum, I mean, in shuffle so far, it might not be like this in rated threes if you're ooming, if uh, games are slow or whatever. You're just, you're keeping double reversion on as many people that are taking damage as possible. Just echo reversion, it's your biggest hot. Um, you're keeping dream breath on um, as many people as possible. Another common mistake I've seen from other evokers, I don't know if I should say it's common, but some people did not know that you can echo multiple people. So like, you know, Sometimes I do what I like to call a double-double Dream Breath, where you do this, and then you do this, and then you double-double. Two Dream Breaths here, two Dream Breaths there, bada-bing, bada-boom. Um, so you can go for, like, you know, big double-double Dream Breaths, um, you know, in the midst of battle. But yeah, and then also uh, Spirit Bloom, kind of on CD as Chrono Warden. It's better as Chrono Warden as uh, Flame Shaper. 
It's kind of like your filler. Um, it gives you haste, it puts up a hot, it's very powerful, and it's also like kind of your like go-to if you get kicked on Chrono Flames. If you get kicked on Spirit Bloom, you can Chrono Flames. If you get uh, kicked on Chrono Flames, you can Spirit Bloom. It's kind of like your backup. Um, I was saying that the one of the downsides of uh, Chrono Flames is that you get kicked on Arcane. It hurts your uh, Bronze School, but if you get kicked on Fire, you can actually immediately cast a Chrono Flame, so a little bit of a double-edged sword. You know, some people want to kick that Fire Breath. It allows you to start shooting Chrono Flames out immediately, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the Stasis Rotation, it's um, it's a little bit different, so if any of you guys have played Evoker before, I kind of I kind of lived by the Stasis into Verdant, into Echo, into Dream Breath. Let's type this here so you guys can see it. Um, Stasis, Verdant, Echo, uh, Dream Breath. That was kind of like what I would say is my old Stasis. But now it's pre-Echo. And you could actually do this, uh, you could do this pre-Echo on, you know, as many essences that you have. Sometimes I like to do it on a couple people just to get a two uh, Dream Breaths up. Pre-Echo into stasis, into dream breath, so your dream breath is getting stasis and it's getting the echo value, into echo, into uh, charged spirit bloom. It doesn't have to be charged, but I kind of like to do it. Um, so basically, let's just go ahead and, you know, get this up here, then we'll do like this, and then we'll do like this. Uh, technically, technically I need uh, a proc here, if I'm being honest. In order to double this, you need uh, four stacks of temporal compression. So we'll just start over. All right, so we, we do like a pre in here, then we'll like echo me, echo him, stasis into a dream breath, into the free echo that we get, into a charged spirit bloom. And why this is really powerful is that you get the big hot from the spirit bloom, you get the haste from the, um, the spirit bloom, and you get the double dream breath. And now when you're going to pop this stasis, you want to make sure that you have Call of Ysera up when you pop it, but you can echo, you know, however many people you want again. And then you pop it, and then it's going to double Dream Breath, and it's going to do the big Spirit Bloom, it's going to get the big Hot Up. It's going to be the same thing for Flame Shaper, except instead of the Charged Spirit Bloom, you're just going to use an Engulf. And Engulf does a lot of healing. Like, it's it's it blows my mind that it, a Flame Shaper feels so much worse than Chrono Warden, because Engulf actually does a lot of healing, but same thing. So, Stasis, which we don't have, into Dream Breath, into Echo, into Engulf. So that is what I consider to be the new stasis rotation. It just kind of gets two of your big heals in the stasis as opposed to the verdant, which feels uh, not as relevant as it did last expansion. Uh, still good to pre, you know, make sure you have the call you say up, but yeah. Damage rotation, I mean, damage damage on evoker is, you know, you just, you just kind of press buttons. Um, I would say you want to try to fire breath, like basically on cooldown, fire breath is going to feed you temporal compression, like spark of insights. So if I had a four stack of temporal compression there and I fire breath, I would have got a free spark. Um, and then your next uh, living flame after you do that is going to shoot out a bunch of living flames, which most likely gives you another proc, which gives you free disintegrates, which, you know, allows you to pump even more and more. Pretty self-explanatory. The only thing uh, that you have to be careful with is if you are playing Chrono Warden, which you probably will be unless it gets nerfed. Um, just be kind of aware that casting these living flames could lock you out. So it's not as thoughtless as it used to be. Like, if you have no green spells, aka Verdant, you know, whatever you got down here and you get locked here, you might just be kind of uh, uh, casting to your own demise. And then don't go too crazy with Disintegrates. Like, if you have no procs, you don't want to oom yourself from Disintegrates. You know, like, right now, like, basically just right here, I have Essence starved myself to just doing, like, stuff like this, you know? Kind of, um... Not really much. If you're ever super essence starved, uh, you could definitely use just like single charge reversions just to try to feed for a proc. Like right there, we use one reversion, we get a proc into another, you know, to another one. Cooldown rotation, I mean, you, you got two cooldowns. You got rewind, you got communion. Um, well, use stasis, but basically use stasis on CD. Uh, use it at the start of the game, use it on cooldown essentially. So you basically have two cooldowns. Time dilation, if people are taking a ton of damage, it's a little bit of a fake cooldown. Um, it slows damage down, but you're still gonna have to heal all of it, so do not get fooled by time dilation. Oh, rescue is actually a one minute CD, which is pretty good as well. I would say most of the time, I probably time dial first, um, probably rescue second while time dilation's on CD, and, uh, rewind and emerald communion are your big cooldowns. Um, emerald communion is going to be better if you have life bind up. It's gonna basically double or triple your healing. Uh, essentially, lifeline, lifeline shares 40% of the healing you have. 
So if you ever played Evoker before and you're like, man, I feel like that communion did nothing, um, you may not have had lifeline. So I'll show you that in a second. And then rewind is more of like a you need healing right this second. Uh, communion's kind of like one of those things where you could press in CC, but sometimes like in shuffle, I'll be like, oh no, this is a bad communion right now. I'll have no life bind. I'll be missing some health. So if I'm missing health, it has to heal me first before it heals the other person. Um, but yeah, so let's just uh, see if we can, you know, put out a couple echoes here. Well, let's just let's just do three basically. The best you can get in shuffle or you know in three v three is three. Um, and it's actually not that hard to get a triple life bind communion. All you got to do is echo one person and then verdant the other person. And then when you press life bind, you'll just be sharing all this healing right here. Look at that. Oh, it's so nice. Um, so you only have to echo one person, then verdant the other person. And you always get life bind. So it's just a nice way to share all that healing. Uh, in terms of mana efficiency, try not to cast in power spells like under four stacks of temporal compression. It's really easy to get four stacks. And why that's important is every single temporal compression you get is worth um either you know a hundred thousand mana via a disintegrate if you're playing the damage talent so boom there's plus 100 or it's worth uh 33 000 from an echo right so just try to play around your temporal compression stacks a little bit um if you're losing games uh via mana you might need to go for like early communions you might need to play energy loop in shuffle i would say this is probably the better spec I'm going to continue to mess around with this because I feel like Titan's Gift is kind of interesting, especially with Chrono Warden. Chrono Warden, you get so many um, Essence Burst procs that I've been messing around with Titan's Gift a little bit just to kind of, you know, feel if 15% more Dream Breath healing is maybe not better than um, Titan's Gift, if you can always proc that Titan's Gift, I guess, for the Dream Breath. So it's kind of interesting. But it's only for the one Echo, not multiple Echoes, which means if this is doing AoE, it's probably not as good. But... In regular threes, my guess is that you probably need energy loop, and then maybe people are going to play like this, I guess. Um, I really hate dropping Spark of Insight. I feel like it makes Evoker feel very smooth, but this is another option. In terms of positioning, man, uh, Evoker, you're just in there, bro. You're at the mercy of the game on this one, honestly. You can't even play max range, because even if I wanted to heal somebody for max range, which I'm doing right now, guess what? Your main spell. Boop! Uh, the only thing that I could really advise you is if you're like in a position where you have no rewind, you have no commune, you got no trinket, and you're trying really hard not to put yourself in a bad position, um, the best thing I could do is, you know, you could try to play in a smart position, but instead of, instead of Verdict embracing them, you can do it on yourself, which is still going to put up the Echo and still going to give you the Call Yasera, which means you can maybe be positioned a little bit better. Um, and then obviously, you know, don't forget, I don't know why this isn't bound, but don't forget that you have, uh, you know, this, uh, range talent here you can really see how good this is wow this is actually crazy watch this whoa that's actually kind of cool if you're ever getting trained you could definitely do like a fat uh spatial paradox into verde embrace uh so yeah spatial paradox is uh it's pretty cool ability i've, I've normally used it offensively but definitely uh something fun to mess around with utility cc being offensive evoker if you're not healing you're doing damage. You are always trying to be offensive. Um, what I will say is that Fire Breath actually helps you be defensive at the same time as offensive. So you do want to try to cast this on CD. And the reason why I say that is you cast it. Um, and it's immediately going to give you procs. And it's, it's immediately going to give you a Living Flames that can shoot out at multiple people. Um, so try not to get trapped in... Um, feeling like you can't do damage because fire breath is always going to be able to help you deal damage getting kicked on it has no cost as chrono warden if you get kicked on it every other tree is available um so it, there's literally no down downfall for getting kicked on fire so definitely try to uh, fire breath as much as you can um i would say disintegrate only when you have procs and uh you know spam living flames in between you know what i mean if you have hots up you know keep your reversions up keep your dream breaths up if you have hots up you're just mashing living flame aka chrono flame and then from a shuffle perspective as well as like maybe just a regular 3v3 healers perspective get aggressive go for sleepwalks man sleepwalk is probably one of the most obnoxious cc's to deal with even more so as Chrono Warden. I was fighting against a Druid today. Uh, you know, he's he's snug on this pillar. You know, I'm over there. He's weaving in and out. He hits me with like a, a root. And I'm pretty sure you can actually use hover while rooted now. But I literally just blink behind the pillar. Hit him with a sleepwalk. Night, night, bitch. So yeah, definitely get in people's face. Go for sleepwalks. Getting kicked on the green spell is very like... It doesn't matter. 
bronze school is your strongest school so when you get kicked on green when you get kicked on red it doesn't really matter you're always trying to go for the cc you're always trying to be offensive and then in terms of utility i'm not really sure uh what you offer that much i would say maybe your strongest utility is the purge the big fire breath purge um but i think i think a lot of your utility comes from damage you know damage and cc being very powerful how to kite well and survive i mean you know it feels like you don't really get targeted too much as evoker but if you're trying to kite on evoker um and you're really getting trained and there's there's a very rare occurrence where this does happen um you put in um unburdened flight so you can't be slowed if that's not enough you would probably play time spiral for another hover which would also once again make you unslowable if that's not enough you could probably start trying to get weird and i mean not necessarily weird i actually really like it you could like play recall and i love this ability and normally when i played it to be honest i um i ended up like going uh dream flight i i don't think you would ever do this personally um you don't really need that i guess yeah I, I don't think you'd ever do this but just just to show you i suppose um recall allows you to kind of like you know pull back from where you were originally at so if you're ever getting like trained you know just kind of take it step by step and start uh you know testing to see how much extra survivability you need but other than that you know wall early pretty short cd two charges it's it's actually almost good to get one out of the way you could also play uh short renewing blaze uh you could also play all these uh damage reduction talents right here so i mean these are probably better especially if like death knights demon hunters they do magic damage things like that um you could switch up your spec like that in order to help you survive offensive defensive i mean you're just preservation is always on you're always kind of like front line so you're always healing you're always keeping your hots up and you're always dealing damage um there's never a point on evoker where you you should feel like you have nothing to do it's more or less just prioritizing what is the best thing to do so i would say if you're trying to be very aggressive i would say at bare minimum just make sure you have your hots up you know if someone's taking damage you know double reversion um double dream breath and now right now if this guy was dying he's got these hots i'm going aggressive i'm just gonna start pumping you know i'm gonna start pumping uh, hots are falling down, like, you know, we refresh him here, we go for this Echo, <coughs> Echo Verdant. I'm gonna start pumping again. One thing that I will say that's, uh, pretty, pretty decent to do in your healing rotation is every other Call of Ysera, you should be using on a Living Flame, like right now. And then the next Verdant, you would put on your, um, Dream Breath. Comps, someone wanted me to put comps in my, in my guides. Um, it's gonna be very up in the air on what's good for Evoker. Um, you're just gonna play with meta classes. I mean, I think Boomkin Rogue will still be good. I mean, you know, Rogue Lock Evoker could be good. Rogue Mage Evoker could be good. Uh, you know, Mage Lock Evoker. The reality is you're putting yourself with comps that have worked before in the past or S tier classes. Um, the only thing that I would say is like, if I was playing like a full melee cleave with Evoker, like I said, it's very possible that Chrono Warden will just straight up not work because you have to cast these to keep your teammates alive and if you're susceptible to being kicked on here and getting locked out on you know two schools of magic it might feel really bad um but maybe it doesn't feel worse than just having engulf um flame shaper does do a lot of healing but it, it's just it's straight up just not better it, it's just not better than uh chrono warden chrono warden is passively too powerful so if we look at our uh, overall data here um my number one healing is essentially Living Flame. Chrono Flame is another 3.2%, but these have a chance to, uh, I think, also proc. And then in terms of the damage, there's Chrono Flame right there. Just kind of buffs you a little bit. One of the most OP parts of this build, the Chrono Warden build, is Golden Opportunity. Your Echo has a chance to be 100% more effective. I mean, that's just... Look at that. Instead of, instead of 105, it's 210. Now you put that hot up and... That's good. That's really good. Evoker, if it doesn't get nerfed, it's going to work with all the meta classes. I hope you guys learned something from this guide. Um, there's a very good chance that we will do another guide after War Within releases if a lot of stuff has changed. Um, but if you guys end up playing beta right now, because, you know, everyone is probably going to buy, unfortunately, the, uh, the early release that Blizzard is kind of, you know, stowing upon us for an extra $30 or whatever it is, $90. Uh, maybe you can kick some ass with beta. Good luck. Evoke is really fun. Hope you guys enjoy it.
stacked and never been